What's up guys, it's Brandon Flash. Today we're back at the Rock Hill, South Carolina Circle K. And you know what that means, we're gonna be running the efficiency loop. And let me tell you what we're going to be doing today. Today we're gonna to be testing out something that I know a lot of people have been wondering, speculating, making assumptions about, and that's whether using the conserve mode on the Rivian R1T actually makes a difference. And not only conserve as a mode, but also lowering the suspension. So we're gonna be testing a couple different variants today. We're going to be testing all purpose at standard ride height, that's our baseline. We're also going to be testing conserve mode at standard to compare whether just changing modes makes a difference. And then we're also going to be testing whether going to conserve mode and putting it on the lowest suspension height improves it even further. In theory, standard height all purpose should be the least efficient with uh, conserve and the lowest being the most efficient. But I'm really curious how much of a difference that makes. We're gonna be running all these tests at 70 miles per hour. We're gonna be running our standard efficiency loop, which is about 66 and a half miles. Starts and ends here at the Rock Hill Circle K with a DC fast charger. So we're DC fast charging up to 70% right now. I checked my tire pressures this morning. They're set to manufacture recommended tire pressures. And we're going to be doing this on a loop style test. Uh, as I mentioned, at GPS verified 70 miles per hour, which will allow it to cancel out the slight elevation changes, uh, as well as any wind effects that there may be. It's a pretty calm day. It's about 70 degrees outside, uh, and it's a relatively flat route, only varies in elevation about 200 feet across the entire route. Uh, and it's very quick on and off the interstate here. So as soon as the Rivian R1T completes at 70% state of charge, we're gonna be heading off. And just in case you're not familiar, this is my 2022 Rivian R1T. We have the 20 inch all-terrain uh, wheels and tires, Rivian blue, not that that changes anything for efficiency. We have the Ocean Coast interior. We have about 5,300 miles on it. I'm gonna be running with the tonneau closed. I did take my roof bars off, uh, no front plate. We've got the cover on the hitch there. And right now we're at the standard ride height, as I mentioned. So that's going to be the first test we'll run. No front plate. so pretty indicative as far as uh, a vehicle aerodynamic profile goes. Uh, and I'm thinking for another test in a separate video to actually run with the tonneau open, the tonneau open with the tailgate down and the tonneau closed as a, an efficiency comparison there. Uh, curious what you guys think of that idea and if it's worthwhile testing. Uh, and also what mode you think I should test those three different things in. Uh, I'm thinking all purpose standard, but open to suggestions. Let's see what we're at for charge. We're using the 120 kilowatt unit today and we're at 69% state of charge. So we're gonna be heading out here in just a moment and let me get set to go. All right, we're charged up to 70% here, 194 miles estimated range. Uh, we're gonna reset my trip here, just like that. And then we're gonna need to be running a loop I have it saved in my uh, favorites here, just so I don't miss the exit as I would notoriously do. So let's get on the road here. We're gonna head on I-77 South uh, towards Columbia, South Carolina from Rock Hill, South Carolina. And I'll see you once we get on the interstate and we'll probably end up having an average of about 64 miles an hour, maybe even 66. Uh, can't recall what it ended up being on my speed comparison video and definitely if you haven't checked out that video I would recommend doing so we compared 60 70 and 80 miles per hour to see how much of a difference it made and it was quite a bit so definitely recommend checking it out and I've set my climate to 70 auto I'm running the seat cooler on one and as I mentioned we're on all-purpose standard soft high on <clears throat> Nice gentle acceleration here. We're gonna be aiming for 70 miles per hour at the end of the on-ramp. This is a pretty long on-ramp here. Just kind of going gently. As I mentioned already as well, 71 miles per hour indicated on the cluster is 70 miles per hour actual, uh, just given the slight variance in the speedometer calibration, which is pretty normal. So we'll lock it in there and it requires a hand on the wheel to engage driver plus. So we'll do that and I'm going to get along here so I have clean air. 
and we're just coming up to the exit here for the turnaround point. Uh, I always like to measure state of charge as we get uh, on the ramp itself. 60% there, state of charge, 33 miles driven, 66 mile per hour average, 2.08 mile per kilowatt hour so far, 15.9 kilowatt hour used. And we're coming regen stop here, not going to touch the brakes unless I absolutely have to. No brakes, wait for this car to go by here. And then we're headed north again. We'll again be aiming for 71 indicated by the end of the on-ramp and lock it back in on driver plus and I'll see you at the Circle K and we'll plug in, go over the stats for this run, charge up and do it again, but this time in conserve mode with standard height suspension. We're just coming up to exit here. We're at 47% two mile per kilowatt hour average so far, 67 miles per hour. Taking it off a of driver plus here. And we'll be at the Circle K in just a moment. I'll give you the update as soon as we pull in. And just arrived here. We're at 47%, 129 miles estimated range, 66.5 miles driven, 66 miles per hour, one hour, one minute, 2.03 miles per kilowatt hour and 32.7 kilowatt hour used. Uh, so that is a little bit worse than the last time I did a 70 mile an hour loop, um, but we're going to get plugged in. Uh, again, I didn't use preconditioning or anything like that. Uh, charge back up and then we're going to run it on conserve mode uh, and we're going to leave it on the standard, hide, hi, standard ride height. And then after that, we're going to switch to the lowest ride height on conserve mode and charging up to 70% each time. Well, we just finished charging at 70% there. 194 miles, but I need to switch it into conserve here as soon as we unplug. Let's see here. Added 35.529 kilowatt hour. All right. And since you can't change drive modes uh, while it's in, or while it's plugged in, we'll switch to conserve here. So it always wants to change the ride height to the last setting you had on conserve. So we're still on standard, but we're on conserve mode now. And let's go to the trip here, reset that. And just like that, we're gonna get going here. So time to do another loop. We've got a Model Y charging there. And let's do this thing again. So just having pulled out here, waiting at the stoplight, uh, we're showing 210 miles estimated here in conserve mode. And let me just show you here on the energy screen. So just like that, so it was 194 when we were on all purpose, now it's up to 210. So the Rivian seems to think that this is going to be quite a bit more efficient, but we'll find out and see. And just set the nav here. And we've got a green light here. And let's get on the interstate. Come on, people. So if I haven't already mentioned it, what conserve mode does is it actually makes the Rivian front wheel drive. Uh, and it does that because the rear drive unit with the two motors in the rear actually has clutch disconnects that allow it to disconnect from driving the axles and essentially put it in freewheel mode uh, because they're permanent magnet motors, all four of them which means that even when there's no power applied to them, they're still requiring power even to freewheel, which is why the clutch disconnect is necessary, which is different than like on the Volkswagen ID4 all wheel drive that the front motor can actually free spin without having uh, a clutch disconnect. And that's actually because it's an induction motor rather than a permanent magnet. So we're just cruising along here now and we'll be cruising for 71 miles per hour for about 66 miles. And again, we're on standard ride height, uh, but on conserve mode. So as far as ride is concerned, just going down the interstate, this is pretty much no compromise. You have less power, but you don't need that just cruising down the interstate. It makes no difference. And if you haven't already, hit the like button and comment some predictions down below before you watch the whole video. And we're just about to exit down here. And we've driven 32.8 miles, 2.17 mile per kilowatt hour. 
and we're just on the off ramp now we're at 61 percent state of charge just getting a regen as we go back up here there's a little bit less regen in conserve mode compared to all purpose just given that you only have two motors engaged but it doesn't seem to make a huge difference uh, at least at reasonable speeds at higher speeds you can tell a bit 183 miles estimated and there we have it at the top of the off-ramp here just shy of 15 kilo an hour this person i guess is stopped so Had to give it a little bit of throttle. There were some cars coming, or at least I thought there were. Not the end of the world for one application there. And we're just getting right back onto the interstate, heading north, and I'll see you at the Circle K. And we're just taking off Driver Plus as we're exiting to go to the, back to the Circle K. We're at 49% as we're exiting 2.13 mile per kilowatt hour just under one hour there uh, at 65.8 miles so we've got a little bit of a drive here to the circle k just like half a mile or actually less than half a mile and, and i'll see you there and we'll show the stats for this run on conserve with standard suspension uh, and then we'll check again or then we'll charge up and do the run with conserve on low or lowest and just like that we're back 2.16 mile per kilowatt hour, one hour, one minute, 30.8 kilowatt hour and 66.5 miles driven. We're at 49%. Uh, going to get plugged in here, uh, but first let's lower the suspension down to lowest. You can see it going down there, it flashes the light. Just throw it in drive here. Let it settle a little bit and back in park. So let's get charged back up here and then um, we'll do the final run and compare all the stats and go over all of them. And just so you can see what it looks like in Lois there, it is basically tucking tire. It is quite low on lowest. I think it looks really good, but the ride comfort is definitely uh, compromised in that setting. Went in and used the restroom, and just like that, literally as I pulled out my camera, it finished charging at 70%. So let's reset, or get that ready to reset there. We're already on the lowest setting, as I mentioned. So we'll get unplugged. We added 32.7 kilowatt hour. And let's get to it. Reset trip, just like that. There we go, so let's get on the road here. Just a reminder, we're on conserve and we're on the lowest suspension setting. So slammed all the way down to the ground. And the ride is going to be not as comfortable as it was on standard suspension. But luckily this route is actually fairly smooth, so shouldn't make a huge difference, but on some routes, it definitely can make all the difference. And just about to exit here, we're at 61% state of charge. Yep, 61 as we're on the ramp here. 2.23 miles per kilowatt hour, one or 14.8 kilowatt hour used and 67 mile per hour average. Gonna turn around here. Traffic is lightening up here a bit, which is pretty nice. Makes it a bit easier for me not having to switch lanes and things to maintain speed. And we're just going to get back on and I'll see you at the Circle K when we're all set with all these tests. And then we'll compare and go over all the results. And we're just about to exit here and we've disengaged Driver Plus. Results so far are surprising. Um, we haven't been achieving the efficiency that I would necessarily expect. So 49% as we're pulling off here, 2.14 uh, miles per kilowatt hour, 30.7 kilowatt hour used, which I actually believe is higher than the previous test. 
Uh, I don't recall exactly. I'll have to look at my uh, notes here and then we'll go over the whole, all the data once we stop here and get plugged in. Um, but this result is surprising so far. So I'll see you at the charger here. And just arrived to the charger 49% and exact same time, but the traffic flow was a little bit better. So I would say that might've influenced the efficiency. First, let's get plugged in. Well, we're plugged in and I've crunched the numbers a little bit. I must say the results are not as conclusive as I'd like them to be. Um, I also included on the spreadsheet, which you'll see here, uh, the results from the conserve low run that we did at 70 miles an hour as part of the previous speed comparison test. Um, and that was actually the most efficient run. So that was slightly interesting. I think it was a combination of conditions, uh, probably just more dense traffic on the road was the biggest factor in that, uh, being that the air was less clean and there's less aero drag when there's more vehicles moving around you. Whereas today the traffic was a bit more free flowing and there was actually, uh, it was easier to maintain speed, which is certainly easier for me but it led to a little bit less efficient driving. So uh, as far as runs today go, uh, we had 2.03 miles per kilowatt hour for all purpose standard. We had 2.16 miles per kilowatt hour for conserved standard. And we had 2.17 miles per kilowatt hour for conserve lowest. So the results are what you'd expect as far as order of uh, most efficient to least efficient. Uh, with all-purpose standard being the least efficient, of course. Uh, I would say that as far as results and how that can translate to your actual use of a Rivian on a road trip or whatever the case may be, uh, it's probably worth going into conserve mode on a road trip, just being that it does give you 6.4% more ef efficient driving compared to all-purpose standard, and you're really not sacrificing anything. Uh, you're just moving it into front wheel drive and having less power, but when you're just cruising down the interstate, who really cares would be my thought there. Um, going to lowest really made hardly any difference at all. It was completely negligible improvement, at least on this test. Might have to redo this test in the future and just see again, um, because the conserve low was actually better. And that was um, compared to, it was another 4% beyond, yeah, it was a 10% more efficient compared to all purpose standard from today. Um, and it was 4.2% more efficient than the test today of conserve standard. So I would say maybe going to lower lowest can improve the efficiency, but today's results don't prove that in any way, uh, at least not in any meaningful way. But switching drive modes from all purpose to conserve does make a difference. We have proven that today. Um, on a road trip, it's basically just free range. Uh, you're saving money on charging if you're paying for charging, uh, which most people are. Uh, you're reducing charge times negligibly, uh, but you're getting more range. So I would say if you're on a road trip, put it into conserve mode, unless you really need all wheel drive for whatever reason. I don't think it gets much simpler than that as far as results. So I'll link this spreadsheet down below in the pinned comment. But otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Have a great rest of your day. If you haven't already, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. I'll see you in the next one.